Welcome back guys, I am Folygon. We made some really great progress in the last part, and we're going to continue to do so in this video. Hey, if you're new around here, consider clicking that subscribe button down below. It helps the channel out a lot, which helps me out a lot. <laughs> and if you're interested in things like my brushes or courses, there's a link in the description to my Gumroad where you can find all of that as well. Okay, let's get into it. Well, I think it's been a little bit too long with our placeholder hair. I know we have a lot of other stuff going on that needs to happen, uh, but it all needs to happen. So <laughs> there's not really a particular order that really matters. Uh, plus, as I've been creating more stuff, I'm going back, tweaking other things, finding what works, finding what doesn't. So normally, uh, I don't I don't normally necessarily sculpt like this because uh, right now I don't really have a specific direction. When I'm doing client work, I have typically a very specific direction that I'm heading in. Uh, and this is, you know, very different from that. It's just we're, we're sculpting and concepting a little bit at the same time. And because of that, it's going to be a lot slower. Uh, so we're just trying to find uh, some cool shapes in the hair right now. Uh, I don't know if we'll keep the, the hair color. Uh, I don't know if it'll go with like the frosty direction that I want for the final image. Uh, we might go blue, we might go pink, we might go white, I don't know. Uh, white sound, sounds kind of cool for like a, a frosty effect. Maybe like an ice queen or like uh, an elemental kind of thing. I, I really don't know what I'm going to do with this, <laughs> as I've been saying. But uh, I'm, I'm really liking the new direction for the face. There is still definitely some stuff that I do want to like tweak and change in there. Uh, and what that ends up looking like later, we'll, we'll kind of figure it out together. But uh, let's just get some stuff on here for the hair. I want to break symmetry on this pretty quick. And I also want to just start kind of sketching a little bit more on this main chunk. So we're feeling a bit helmet hair or helmet head, whatever you call it. Uh, right now, so let's just let's just get in here start adding a little bit of volume Just play with these bangs Hair always feels really awkward when it's uh, symmetrical because it's not <laughs> it's not supposed to be not normally We wouldn't expect uh, very very symmetrical shapes. So at least uh, initially here. I'm just kind of breaking up the form getting a couple uh, brush strokes on there with my clay brush as well as using my move brush, just kind of framing around the face. Uh, I think that this is still retaining some of the squared off shape that I had on the head earlier. I can check that with transparency. I've just kind of squished it in with my move brush to better fit around there. That is feeling a lot better. Uh, let's continue with that. So this is now normally when I would start like splitting some stuff up, playing with those shapes even more. I'm going to try using my clay tubes here, or I'm sorry, not clay tubes, but a uh, cube tube, different brush entirely. Clay tubes is a great brush though, in terms of default clay brushes here in ZBrush, if you're looking for one. Okay, so I'm just kind of uh, drawing out a big old curve real quick and adjusting the size of that so that I can get that into a decent place. I don't, I don't maybe a little bit larger. That works for now. I have a bunch of different hair brushes, but um, you know, especially for just experimenting here, I, I don't really want to have any preconceived form or anything to like lead me in a specific direction. I would much rather just have it be as plain as possible, and then I can kind of go back through after the fact and start adding additional form to these these strokes of hair. Uh, that's typically what I prefer when I'm kind of being explorative, being very messy right now, just getting some strokes on the surface. I don't need this to be clean or or really even look nice. I just need something there first and then I can edit it after I get things in place. So as I've mentioned before, there are a lot of different ways to tackle hair. <laughs> too, <laughs> too many. Um, it, it, I don't know. I, I feel like hair is for, for some reason a little bit different for people like it, people especially struggle with hair I don't really know why that is I, I don't think hair is too different from anything else hair kind of fits into its own category a little bit in terms of uh, kind of these flowing shapes I don't really know what you would call the category but um, similar with like clothing or like if you were to sculpt water or anything like that all very similar in, uh, in terms of like general 
larger flow of form. Uh, you have to worry about the, the primary kind of larger shape, which is what I've done here, and then start kind of thinking more about splitting that up into secondary shapes and then, you know, tertiary from there, so on and so forth. Whoa, I almost deleted that. That would have been bad. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's split this off here. I'll delete that. Isn't that a nice look? By the way, let me know what you guys are thinking of the new format. Uh, I've been kind of experimenting with uh, editing these down uh, quite a bit more. I, I want to show as much of the process as I can without things getting incredibly boring, uh, which, you know, when I'm sitting here just nudging polys very, very, like, <laughs> the smallest amount, I know it, um, it gets really boring for a lot of people, so... Uh, I'm trying to find a, a nice middle ground where I can show off a lot of the process and still keep things like really interesting, informative, etc. So, you know, trying to find a balance. I don't know. I don't know what, where we'll land, but uh, I've been getting some nice comments from you guys. I appreciate it. But let me know what you prefer. If you, if you guys like seeing like everything raw or if you want me to spend a little bit more time kind of cleaning up. <laughs> a lot of this a lot of this particularly messy footage i i pause a lot when i'm talking here during these real time uh, sculpting videos because i'm i'm like <laughs> i'm doing it right now i i'm trying to concentrate on what i'm doing on, on sculpting it's like I've, I've seen lots of videos of like let's players and stuff or or whatever you know people who play games professionally um and they're, they're talking about like, oh, it's so hard to talk and play the game at the same time. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh you have no idea. <laughs> like, uh, I feel like this is just impossible for my brain to, to split talking and, um, and sculpting at the same time. Or at least very difficult. Obviously not completely impossible because I am doing it here. To some extent. But then I'll go back and edit the footage and I'll be like, whoa, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember saying this at all. Okay, so check this out. We got the hair kind of going back, so now I'm using some back face masking magic. Ooh, to start blending that all together. I really like uh, kind of the chunky feeling of some of these pieces. Definitely kind of a cool effect. Whenever I, um, I'll just like mirror that over to the other side to like double check on some stuff, see how it's like feeling on the head, because it's, it's technically you know, gonna still line up with everything. That doesn't feel bad though. It's a good way to like double check on um, uh, how things are looking, I guess. Because your brain kind of gets used to looking at things from one direction. Oh, snap, not what I meant to click. Uh, so you, you kind of get like, I don't, I don't know what the word would be, I guess just used to looking at something and it becomes harder over time to notice your mistakes. So I recommend trying to refresh your eyes as often as possible, whatever that may be. That's, you know, one technique. You can also just throw your stuff in Photoshop or or like literally paint, I think, and just like mirror your canvas horizontally and then um, get a get a new kind of perspective on that. That's one way to do it. All right, so I'm, I'm liking the chunkiness. This kind of thins out quite a bit too much. So uh, what I'm going to do here is go through and add some creases to all this hair. Some very boring stuff. So we'll probably skip over a lot of it. But I'll show you one. And it stays nice and sharp and clean and retains its volume. But uh, obviously I'll be tweaking that later on. I, I can experiment with, with changing that. But let's go through here, crease the rest of these really quick. I'm actually gonna, here, we'll, we'll do something really quick. I'll just click on crease at the uh, default 45 degree angle value. See if that did a good job. Whoa, check that out. Nice clean creases everywhere with the uh, crease menu here. This is the only way you used to be able to crease in ZBrush before the Z Modeler brush. And uh, <laughs> it was painful, but technically we didn't typically have a lot of low poly stuff in here. So it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't used too often. It was more of a hyper specific, like uh, very case, case specific tool that didn't see a lot of use. And uh, so those square tubes, <laughs> they're a little bit kind of in your face right now. That is not the shape language that we're gonna that we're gonna be sticking with here. Uh, that'll be changing a lot later on, I'm sure. But for now, uh, I think it kind of works. Gets a cool effect here, framing the face, and we can get just you know a general idea of what we want here for this hair. 
I think we're getting some cool... I don't know. Like, we could really play with that. All right, just cleaning that up. I said <laughs> not technically cleaning, I guess, but uh, just kind of filling in a lot of the gaps there. Still keeping it all very rough, but uh, we'll continue on here with some of the rest of the hair. Specifically, this back large section. What do we want to do there? We can play with that a lot. I'm going to have to continually remind myself that I am uh, only showing pretty much things above the, the rib cage. And honestly, I should uh, should chop this lower section off here. So a fun little tip for you guys that are actually uh, ZBrush users, uh, you can actually delete polygons while you have subdivision levels. A lot of people, I don't think, know that you can do this. It's really easy. All you have to do is step down to your lowest subdivision level, find the uh, polygons you want to delete. If you want to make like a really clean selection, I've already made a selection down here for this lower portion. You can just hide that, step up your subdivs, now, if you try to run a delete hidden operation right now, it'll say that you can't because you have subdivs. So you don't want to freeze your subdivs. Never freeze your subdivs. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of reasons why you don't want to do that, but we're not going to do that. I'm just going to click on delete lower. Then I'm going to delete those hidden polygons. They're gone. And now I can just reconstruct my subdivs and we're good. So there's, you know, a lot of benefits to working this way. I'm going, it, it really doesn't matter because I'm going to be remeshing this geometry and working with it more as we move forward. Uh, so it's like not a huge deal. So for now, I'm, I'm just going to keep that uh, lower portion and I'll be deleting that later. But just a fun tip for you guys, for those that actually play with ZBrush here. All right, I'm going to be uh, playing with this hair just a little bit more. Seeing how I can frame the face a little bit better. Just working on the larger shape at first. Start breaking symmetry more. Probably merge this into the uh, the top piece as well. Think about blending that all together. All very rough, and really you want to keep things rough here in the early stages. If you waste time, like really worrying about specifics right now, it just doesn't matter. Playing with splitting the hair up into a couple different segments now for the uh, backside. This is uh, another technique that I could have used on the bangs. Uh, it it kind of gets you to the same result. This way is a little bit messier initially. I wanted something a bit more clean and controlled and something that I could just draw out up top. So now I can play with these even more, continue to refine, try to get something cool. One thing that I really like to try to integrate in my hair, there's a lot of things because hair is very complicated. It's got a lot of uh, flow to it. It's, I mean, when when you break it down, it's like, it's a it's a tube. It's a, I mean, yeah, it's that's what it is. It's a tube. <laughs> it's um, it's got a lot of fundamentals at play though. When you're talking about flow, the flow of a shape, it sounds really like non-objective, uh, but there are actually objective things that you can do to a shape to make them more. Uh, visually interesting, what some people refer to as appeal. And uh, one of those that I really like to apply to my shapes here in hair is something called taper. And that is when you go from a shorter uh, side to a longer or wider or bigger portion. So like here with the, the side sections here for the hair, I'm trying to go from an, uh, a side that's a bit more narrow to a side that's a bit more wide down at the bottom to uh, create some visual interest, or more visual interest. And I'm being uh, kind of freehand with these shapes with my move brush just to uh, try to find something that's interesting. I mean, there's really no right or wrong answer in terms of finding like the, the larger shape. I mean, there's just so much that I can play with here that, um, yeah, I'm just kind of experimenting, which is a lot of what this is. It's me just playing around and if I find something that I like, trying to uh, exaggerate what I, I what I do, and you know, knock out or knock down, I guess I, I don't know what you call it. Get rid of <laughs> what I don't like, and um, yeah, I just keep on like doing that over and over and over until we get to a cool result. I like how that was um, flipping up there, so now I'm trying to to integrate that, but like the the other direction. I, yeah, I feel like so many people think that art is like this magical thing. It's not. 
There's no magic here. <laughs> it's just, it's just pain. There's, there's just pain here. Lots and lots of pain. <laughs> I'm joking, but it's true to some extent. All right, kind of liking this. I'm gonna get some more shapes in here. Create some uh, brush strokes. See what happens. Follow this larger shape here. Ooh, there's a, there's a lot that I need to fix here. The way that's curling around is very, very much not what I want. That's my own fault though. I did it. I blame myself. That's what's great about art. <laughs> there's no one to blame but yourself. Unless the client just wants you <laughs> to make something really awful, which I have had before. I'm just like, are you sure you want me to do that? And they're like, yes, do exactly this. This is exactly what I'm like, oh, God. don't tell anybody that I made this, please. Which is the case most of the time anyway. <laughs> There's so many projects that, I, I mean, I, everybody works on that's just NDA forever. God, that is hideous. So what I'm doing here with the uh, side portions of the hair in a uh, kind of like larger scope, just to uh, bring you into the, the brain space, I'm trying to find a larger shape that I like, and then once I do find something that I like, I'm going to start splitting these up even more to create more visual interest. So, you know, we started off with a big shape, I split that off into these, and then I'm gonna break those down even further. Now, there are multiple ways to do that, and we'll talk more about them as they come up, but uh, at least for now, I'm still working on that big shape, so. Uh, a lot of work still needs to happen with these to get them to a place where I will be happy and ready to move forward. Uh, you gotta be careful though. You don't wanna run before you walk, I guess. That's not that's not what I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> you don't wanna sprint ahead. You just wanna make sure that your, you know, your, your main shape is in a good place. Because if you rush ahead, you're going to spend a lot of time working on creating you know, all these details on something that's not foundationally very good. And I'll tell you right now, no amount of details that you do are going to save a bad initial sculpt. Like you can put the best skin texture ever on a like an absolute monster of a face. And, and I don't mean monster in the sense of like you were attempting to sculpt a monster. I mean, you were attempting to sculpt something maybe beautiful and it became a monster. But no amount of like really nice details is gonna save that. There's, there's nothing you can do other than go back to your primary forms and, you know, redo and, and fix that stuff. So I think I want this hair to uh, frame the face a little bit better. Uh, that sounded like a question coming out of my mouth. It's not. I want this face to frame the hair a little bit better. Uh, because I want this final uh, piece, this final image, to be really focused uh, up, up top on the face, right? I really want the focus up here. And if I have this really long hair on the character, which is fine, I can have off-screen elements that are you know, flowing into the on-screen elements. I just don't want to spend any time like down there working on those very long, or at all. But at least for these sections of hair at the uh, front of the face, I really want these to um, uh, be a bit more on-screen, be a bit more on-screen in terms of uh, what we can see for that final image. Uh, because that is going to be our focal point, and I want these to kind of um, help lead your eye around a design, which is something a little bit of a, a complex topic. I don't want these to mirror each other too much. They're getting too symmetrical. Can't have them do the exact same thing. That's just silly. That's not how hair do. That is not how hair do. Put that on my tombstone, please. So we'll maybe talk about that more, or at least I'll point it out more when it uh, happens, when I actually do it. Right now, it's happening a little bit. I'm liking the uh, strand over here on the left, or her her right, technically, I guess. Uh, a little bit more. This is starting to work in a, in a good way. It, it definitely needs some more effort thrown at it. But uh, at least we're, we're heading in a, a direction that's a lot better than what it was previously. Just starting to get a little bit more shape on there, a little bit more stuff with some pinch using my mech cut. A lot of fun stuff that you can do with this brush. It's good for just planing out, which is what I'm using it for right now, just planing out the shape. In combination with trim brushes, very nice. Pinch and trim, that is what you need to work on the primary shape. 
of a uh, piece of geometry. Pinch, trim, and move. And then any kind of thing that you can add volume with. It, I mean, that is pretty much my entire, like, uh, my entire tool set. You don't need a lot. You don't need a lot at all. You can do a lot with just a three or four brushes. This piece is so boring from the uh, profile, and this is what I'm trying to avoid with these shapes. You can make something really interesting from the front. You know, I am making something for one final image, but I, I can't help myself but try to make something a bit more visually interesting from the profile as well. Because from the front, I mean, that's just a that's just a boring shape. Let's like let's find a way to make this more interesting. Maybe we can wrap this back underneath the arm or something like that. I think I might have broken this. Hold on. I had a dynamic. Yeah, I, I did break that a little bit on accident. Uh, it's, it should be fine now. So I had dynamic on while I was creating subdivs. That is not how you want to work. Dynamic subdivs plus real subdivs. Bad idea. Okay, so I've been working on this uh, for a while on these little segments. Uh, which means that it's time to focus our attention elsewhere, or at least very soon. You, you want to be careful that you don't just work in the same spot for a super long time. You get a little bit of tunnel vision, you kind of lose the big picture. So that means that you know, I'm getting to a place where I need to move my attention elsewhere, give my eyes a little bit of a break in this area, and then uh, come back to it a little bit later. But I'm going to finish up just blocking this out a little bit more, and then I'll do that. I don't want to work on uh, lining the hair up with the body too much because the uh, body here is probably subject uh, subject to change. I've not given her any breasts or anything, and the uh, the shape of the chest and torso is pretty pretty wonky right now. So we'll probably tweak a lot of that later. This feels <laughs> this feels a bit more like a cape in the back than than hair. Let's uh let's see if we can fix that. Also, something I need to be very careful of is the uh, the distance here. I need to keep that a little bit more tight. So I need to kind of push in along that area. Oh, I got a real nasty piece of geometry here. This is my fault, the way I cut this up. Uh, but I have an idea. Let's see if I can trick Dynamesh real quick. That's nasty. Just look away. Everybody just look away for a moment. This is fine. Everything's fine. No problems here. Everything is fine. Close your eyes pretend that we're good and you can look now okay <laughs> uh i i gotta like re -top that off it, it's just faster to just fix it really quick with uh dynamesh continue forward not waste not waste time fiddling and stepping back i've talked about this before where i'm just like there's I, I could sit here and undo and figure out exactly where i made that mistake and fiddle with everything it's just like ah just trudge ahead get go forward get things done keep going could also do uh, maybe like a ponytail. I don't know, from the profile, this actually reads kind of cool. Like a shorter hairstyle with like really long hair in the front. That might be visually fun to play with. And that's, hey, that is what we're trying to do. Make something cool. Make something visually interesting. It doesn't matter if it looks absolutely ridiculous and no one would ever have their hair like that. But also this character has pointy ears. So take that, checkmate atheists. Wow, this is just freaking get in there. There we go. So I've given this a little bit more volume here in the back, right around the uh, uh, back corner here of the head. I've found over time that keeping that just a little bit more volumetric, especially if you're going to add a ponytail, makes a bit more sense because the hair is like pulling up to that point. But even without it, I've just found that it creates a really nice shape in the silhouette, and it's something that I like to do on a lot of my... Uh, a lot of my characters, male and female. I don't know, I just like the way it looks. I don't do it on everything though. Here I think it creates a cool silhouette. It's also helping me pull in more here. Check out this funky hair. I feel like a lot of, uh, I feel like probably a lot of people feel like really, what would, what would it be, self, self-conscious I guess, about um, like showing off their, their works in progress, showing off how things like, like the awkward stages like like this but it's going to be like it's going to look better later i i don't care <laughs> i don't know maybe it's just something that comes with time because like yeah it looks dumb right now it looks bad but it, it like it'll shape up i guess it's just like confidence like knowing that 
it'll eventually work. You just gotta keep playing with it until it starts to feel better. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's silly to like feel self-conscious about something that's not done yet. The example I like to use is like a painter wouldn't make like a few brush strokes, or really even like ten or a hundred or hundreds of brush strokes. It's, it's going to take a lot more than that, right? <laughs> They're not going to make that many brush strokes, like a few, and be like embarrassed of what that looks like. It's not finished, like the piece isn't done yet. I think it's silly to be worried about what something looks like before it's finished. If, like at the end, if you're done and you're like, wow, this looks terrible, well then yeah, maybe, okay, then you can feel self-conscious and embarrassed because at least you're you're putting a stamp of, of finished on that as you, uh, you know, you're gonna continue forward with something else and you're calling that one done. But until then, I, I feel like feeling embarrassed or, or like self-conscious about something is just it's not worth your time like it, it's like you can get some good feedback online share uh maybe share some of those awkward stages like what i'm doing let everybody know that like just because you see a finished piece that's kind of like one of the things i really wanted to do with my channel when i started it I was like show show like the the awkwardness, the like weird stages of 3D form because sculpting is something that takes a really really long time to like create a nice finished character and I know that for Sculptober I spent like two to three hours on each piece a day for the sculpting portion and that's that's not a lot but like you know in that first 30 minutes hour whatever like even for sketches like it, it was feeling super awkward. Getting past that point, I think, is a, a stage that, like, all artists go through. I'm sure when I was new to art, like, new to digital sculpting, that I was probably really embarrassed at first to share anything online. I don't know, I, I, I remember being really excited, and I, I was, like, so, <laughs> I was so much in the encampment of, I didn't know how bad I was and how difficult and deep this well went that <laughs> I was just willing to you know share everything and be like isn't this isn't this garbage man i just made amazing isn't this just great and everyone's like no no it's very bad you're very bad at this actually i'm like ah oh, well <laughs> I, maybe for that reason it is good to good to post stuff online a lot get some outside opinions make sure <laughs> you're not just existing in a bubble but yeah i, I think it's a, a phase that probably a lot of people go through and it's, I, it's probably a healthy phase to go through. Get to that point where you can confidently say, screw it. That's a nice place to be, right? It's kind of working on the larger shape here. I'm not exactly sure what I want this to look like silhouette-wise, but I need something on the canvas first before I can tweak it, make it look better. Like I said before, hair is something that like I, I think makes a huge difference in uh, framing your character's face. Like this, this adds just like a whole new whole new personality and, and level to this character. I, I don't know, I think hair is uh, a huge kind of part of the personality of a character. I'm gonna make a couple folders, clean this up, and I'll be right back. Hey guys, file organization. Very important, very helpful. Keep things clean. I'm gonna make some more changes to the face. Uh, I've been working on the hair for a little bit, and uh, I feel like moving forward on the face just a little more in a couple areas. So uh, we're gonna play around with that now. Seeing if I can get a little bit more room around this eyelid. It's, it's a little messy around here, so it's a little tough, but if I can just get a little bit more, I'll be happy. I don't know if you guys have heard me say this before, but sculpting's hard. <laughs> it's not easy. Hopefully I don't make it look easy. I, I, it's kind of the opposite of what I want to do with my channel here. I want to I want to show like a lot of the stuff where it is like really, really difficult. Hopefully I don't make it look too easy here. It's not my intention. I don't want to discourage people or anything like that. Definitely the opposite of what I'd like to do there. This is just very wrong in here and very messy. I might just be able to increase this volume and make it look close enough. Close enough, it turns out, a lot of the time is good enough. For this though, I might play with it off, uh, off camera because it's such a small little Thing that I want to tweak in here. It's going to be pretty time consuming. So many little things to uh, to fix and kind of play with here. As I've mentioned before, it's always really interesting to me how many 
just tiny little tweaks you can make to a face and make it just feel completely different from where you started. I don't know, I, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a cool thing because there's so much variation in the faces that you can create. But then again, so many people do kind of fall into that same face syndrome area where a lot of the stuff that they make looks very similar. And I've been there myself. Oh no, color's getting messed up in here. Just kind of repaint, fix some stuff there. I'm gonna get some teeth in this mouth. Some twofers. A really nice uh, trick that you can do with a cylinder to insert in the mouth to just make it look like some teeth. It's a good placeholder and sometimes passable for uh, certain types of styles. Helps to make the mouth look a little bit more uh, natural there. I, I, I think I'm gonna fix this upper lip while I'm here. While I'm thinking about it. That, that looks a little bit better. Just a little bit more fixing here around the uh, upper lip. Change the direction of that wrapping down. Maybe a little bit uh, too much there. Don't want her to look like a chipmunk. Don't want to get too buck-toothed. It's getting a little bit of some secondary form here around the lips. Not necessary. And uh, I might not even keep it, but it, I, I want to experiment with this a little bit more. I'd, I'd like to have a little bit more of a subtle effect than what I have right now. And that requires refinement. Let's go back through. Just doing a gentle, smooth pass on that shape. I think this uh, transition here is uh, still quite a bit too deep right through here. So we're going to see if we can uh, reduce that right through here. Shouldn't be too hard. Makes the face in general feel like it's dipping in now. So I just want to pull out that entire area back here by the wing of the nose and help to blend the rest of this together. I think the, the length of the nose is maybe what's causing this all to uh, feel like the uh, face was too far back or uh, the lip was too far forward from that point. Like there's, there's too much depth around that corner between here and here. Very small thing, but um, small things add up pretty quick when you're talking about 3D. Yeah, I actually like that a lot. I think that feels a bit more natural, a bit less uh, like the nose is pushing forward off the face like it's not connected to bone. I think we're getting a little bit too volumetric here. I'm just going to try reducing a little bit of the form here. Check out that back corner, straighten out this jawline slightly, reassess a couple areas there. This is a very difficult area, I think in general. Just trying to fix this front plane to side plane transition as it just feels a little bit too narrow. I think getting some width around there is a good idea. Obviously very sharp. We'll soften it. Or I will soften it. This is me. I, hey, I'm the one sculpting here. Stop trying to take credit for my stuff, all right? Cut that out. We're like, we're getting really warbly up here by the eye. Very nasty. Not liking that. I think my geometry is just really stretched over here. And because of that, I'm getting some really nasty, um, subtle shapes in my surface, which I am not particularly a fan of. Right through here. It looks clean enough. I don't know what's going on there. Let's, uh, here, pro tip for you guys. Turn off your poly paint. Turn off your color. Focus on form for a little while. It's been a minute since I've done this, so I just need to see my surface very clearly through here. Understand why we're getting some weird stuff. So a little bit of reassessment here for this area. Mostly just kind of making sure the skull is still round here. I had it dipping in slightly previously, which I did fix, but now it's, it's no longer doing that, at least not nearly as much as it was. I just need to make sure that it doesn't start pushing back in that direction. I can start getting a little bit more form around the temple, maybe. We are definitely getting stretched through this area now. Just changing a couple planes along the uh, ridge of the skull here. Give it a little bit more anatomical form. 
transitioning into the, the temple here. Obviously, way exaggerated. Alright, there we go. I'm, I'm starting to fix this area up a little bit. I wasn't liking the, uh, the angle change through here. It felt really drastic. Like, the eye cavity was super, um, super, super deep. I was not liking that. But I think we've started to head in a bit of a nicer direction there. Uh, some stuff is definitely misaligned with the eyebrow, but that's okay. We'll get that. Clean that up eventually. Just raising the ears up on the head a little bit. Kind of going for that downturned ear look. I played with that a little bit earlier. And I liked the uh, direction. I think it's an interesting shape. Kind of reminds me of some of the characters from Treasure, uh, Treasure Planet. I did one of those characters for uh, Sculptober. Probably my... <laughs> Probably my least favorite out of what I did. Not not because of the film or anything. I love that movie. It's been so long since I've seen it, though. I need to rewatch it. Um, but but uh, I just had way too much to do on that day, and I didn't have enough time for that sculpt. I really didn't get a lot done on him. It was uh, John Silver, who, spoiler alert, is the antagonist of the film. All right, I, I'm gonna have to dynamesh this geometry. I've given her a really strong brow. You don't wanna do this if you're trying to get something feminine. This is a very masculine rhythm of the face. A, a lot of these really hard shapes are. Um, I My geometry is just so kind of stretched right now that I, I really need to get something a bit clean, something new. So I'll probably take some time to do that, but at least let me, uh, Fiddle with this a little bit longer. Maybe turn the poly paint back on, see what it's looking like. There you go. There's that fun little error that I talked about before. It happens when you're working on multiple subdivs. It's not really an error. It's just the way poly paint works here in ZBrush, especially when you're using your smooth brush and adjusting a lot of stuff there. Really easy to fix though. The uh, actual paint though, less, less so. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, if it's picking up on the recording, but you'll see a lot of this kind of blocky colors through this area. This is stuff that I'll have to clean up later. If I paint out some of it, maybe you can see the difference. But uh, yeah, very frustrating, very annoying stuff to kind of work with. It just kind of happens. There there are ways around it, ways to avoid it. But uh, let's check out some of this, some of these changes here. See how that's looking. All right, I'm going to shift this cheekbone hit around a little bit. I've talked about this in a previous video. Just trying to get something a bit more distinct for the silhouette over here. A little something fun here with some exaggeration. Get like a really sharp pull out. Feel a little Angelina Jolie from, uh, what is it, Maleficent, I think? So I've exaggerated that pull out there in an attempt to uh, find out where uh, where too much is too much, right? Find out where things start to break and then nudge it back some. And I think I might have found where too much is too much here. So let's, uh, let's nudge it back some. That's going to be a good place for us to hit pause here. Uh, we'll continue working on this face and hair and everything else here a lot more in the next part. So come on back in the next part to see the continuation of the process. Click that subscribe button if you're new around here. And check out gumroad.com slash polygon if you're interested in getting anything like my brushes, courses, or materials. With that, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.